Hello and welcome to episode 37 of Nintendo Therapy, a show about the latest Nintendo news and rumors, as well as a celebration of all things Nintendo. With me this week is Harrison. Hey Kevin, welcome back. And that is it. End of list. <laughs> it's a, just a one-on-one -on -one this week. So how have you been, Harrison? What have you been up to? Uh, well, good. I, sh I shared you my 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 exciting photo uh, uh, to today. Uh, we got a we got a new puppy in our house, so that's been that's been most of my week. Um, that's gonna be work. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. She's um she's she's about nine weeks old. Um, and and, and oh, wow. we're used to it. And, and we're used to it. Um, this is my this is my 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 third dog and um that's that's pretty normal for how i grew up i, I always grew up with lots of dogs um I, we have two dogs and i remember when they were that young or i don't remember how young we got them whenever you can pick them up legally <laughs> like i remember that was a thing like we 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 picked them out we had to wait for them to be like old enough to legally adopt or whatever uh so i don't know what that age is but pretty young, you know? Um, and I remember we had to put down a tarp in the area of the apartment they were living in until they were potty trained. We were just like, we, we can't keep cleaning this up. And we just did the whole, that whole bedroom was a tarp that they were on. Yeah. Well, so good well, luck with that. <laughs> well, well, all, all of mine are tiny. I, I, I mean, we have, we all, we have all chihuahuas, uh, growing up. I, I had mostly, mostly large breed dogs. Um, mm -hmm. but for, for our house, it's good. Um, our other two are, are great. They're very, they're very well trained, well behaved usually. Um, and she's just, you know, she, she fits in like, like, like the palm of my hand. Like she's just very, very small Little right teacup. now. Um, n n n not a teacup, but like the size of a full grown teacup, you know, like okay. it, 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 she'll grow, she'll grow to be, I think, she, I think she's going to grow to be somewhere in the middle. So she's going to, I think she's going to be around, around five pounds, which is still tiny. Don't get, don't, 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 don't get me wrong. It's, it's still, it's still very, very small for it, for a dog. And, and Hey, listeners out there, like, um, if you're, if you're a, a new dog owner or you're thinking about getting a dog, my ultimate dog hot take is if you're thinking about getting a dog, consider if you have the, the space, the time, the money to have two dogs. Because <laughs> what I've what I've learned as a, as a kid, as an adult, is in, in a lot of ways, for me at least, two dogs has been easier than than one dog not easier financially necessarily but there have been lots of different ways that having two dogs has made it way easier and more fun yeah i feel like they not only do they play with each other but they actually like i feel like they learn things quicker because they see the other one getting rewarded sometimes and kind of put between what they're doing and what the other one is doing they can piece together what the reward system is quicker yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like I, I, I've taken a little bit of a break off um, from work lately, but I yesterday was my first day working at home with the three of them, and my other two knows that when I'm working, like they go, they go, they they go lay down. They don't, you know, they don't bark. They know it's it's work time, and that's exactly what they did. So, um, you know. When I've had one dog, like when I had just uh, my my one uh, my one dog Phoebe, uh, she's great, but she drives me crazy sometimes because she just won't she just won't leave me alone. So I, I wish we would have just gotten her a friend right at the very beginning. We kind of you know jug our hands or whatever I would say here. That's that's the exciting part of my life. Um, what what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing Nintendo dogs. No, um, <laughs> I've been playing, uh, the, uh, still the Lego Marvel superheroes too. Uh, I forgot how much I love Lego games, which I, going back into this, cause I haven't played one in forever, but this one's been sitting on my switch for six years. And I'm just like, so this was here every single time I was like, I need a new game. Let me find something. This thing was here 
and I love it. And I, I regret not playing it until now. But when I was playing, I did encounter like these glitches and nothing major, but it, it's something that like reminded me of how much quality control Nintendo has on their first party titles. Cause that's mostly what I've been playing this year. And I kind of forgot that games do certain things like this, like Nintendo, they have such good quality control. Um, usually when you see videos of like Zelda glitching or something, that's like people trying to break the game, but like under normal play conditions, um, basically I hit a glitch in a, in Marvel Lego where like the elevator came down and it landed on a character that was being controlled by the computer. Um, but it registered that as me getting on the elevator and forced me into the next area. But when, and I was like, I wasn't done exploring yet. And, um, and then there was like an area where I hit an invisible wall, uh, where I'm like, oh man, I forgot about invisible walls. Like, I mean, like Mario games don't have invisible walls, you know, you can always clearly see the defined boundaries. So, so, so when, when you say quality control, of first party Nintendo games. Are we including the Pokemon company? <laughs> I was thinking of that too. And, and no, uh, cause that's kind of like second party almost. Okay. It's like, okay. it's not, not quite a third party, but Nintendo I've heard that. I, I don't know. You would know more than me, but I've heard that those aren't as Nintendo quality controlled as a Mario or Zelda game would be. Um, they just, they're like partnered with them. Yeah. That, that would be saying it nicely. I mean, I mean, cause I game mean, freak makes them. I mean, I love Pokemon, but, but, and I, I had a lot of fun with Scarlet, Scarlet and Violet, but I'll say it again. Uh, Scarlet and Violet is the, is the roughest modern. I'm going to call it uh, whatever. You want. It's, it's not, a, it's, it's, First party, second party, not an independent game. Non-independent game. It's the roughest one I've ever played. Like yeah, in modern gaming. For sure. Which which don't get me wrong, which I can still have fun with that. You know, you're talking about um you're talking about glitches. And uh recently I was playing this this uh this new uh early access game on, on Steam, and I ran into this glitch I didn't know how to fix. And um, like I had things that were like stuck to the wall. So what I did was I got on Discord and I messaged the the creator of the the, the the developer, and he and he messaged me back and told me what to do or how like like try to fix it for me. And like if you were to tell if you were to tell the child version of me that. You, you would be doing that in the future, I think my head would explode. Like, if you were to tell me that in the future, yeah. you would be pretty much directly talking to people who develop games that you play. Um, yeah, I mean, as a kid, I don't even think I registered that people made these games. It was almost like companies made the game, you know? Like, you don't even think about the person. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong, like, this this developer is an indie developer um, from Turkey, and he's got, a, he's got uh, two games on Steam right now. He probably has downloads in the, in the thousands, you know? Like, like it's, it's very, very moderate. It's like, you know, it's very, something to be very proud of. But, 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 but still, like, I've thought about how I imagined video games in the future when I was a kid. And how I've been right and wrong, I would have never imagined um, the, the the type of connections you would have with with certain developers, like even a uh, like like a Twitter response or or, or 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 you know something like that. You know, is there? Can you off the top of your head think about like one of the most annoying glitches you've ever faced? I mean, it'd be a good segment in a future episode, but just like a real quick like something that jumps out at you. Cause I can think of one I'll, I'll go while you think. So, um, I love the toe jam and Earl franchise, even though it's not Nintendo, I know, but they are on Nintendo systems now. Uh, in fact, I think they're on the switch online service, but anyway, I love toe jam and Earl played it like crazy as a kid. So when they made toe jam and Earl three on the Xbox, I was super excited because it was going to be a Dreamcast game and then it got canceled and I was like, oh, it's actually going to get released and it came out on Xbox. 
I wanted to 100% it because I'm such a huge fan and I couldn't because I've tried twice. The first time I tried, I had a glitch where so to 100% it, you have to collect these keys in each level. And there was one level where it kept saying there was one key I hadn't gotten yet, but I know it's wrong because there's an ability that lets you warp to the keys. And I was just spamming that thing and it was just warping me all in these like locations where keys I already got were. It, it, there was no key. It, it was just a glitch. It wouldn't set the counter to zero for the level. And then another time I tried playing the game, I hit a glitch at the end where it wouldn't open the door to the end boss. And I was like, okay, so this this game <laughs> is just glitched as heck. I'm I, I'm done. So I haven't tried it a third time yet. But maybe if they ever do like an updated version of it, I'll try again. The, the, not not one in particular that stands out. I mean, I I I live through glitches. Um, like like I I I've just I play a lot of like I play a lot of early access games now. So um, it is what it is. But um, I do understand getting thrown out of that experience. Like for example, on like on Switch, like the games I've had that that crash on me when games just flat out crash, especially if it's like an online game or a game where you don't auto save or something like that. I, I lose motivation really quickly. Like um, I told you the sequel to golf story uh, shadowed it, it uh, sports story. It shadow dropped on switch and it was, yeah, it was horrible and it was so glitchy. And by the third time that it had completely crashed on me, like software closed, I was like, man, like, I don't know if I can do it anymore. Like, I just, like, <laughs> it was becoming <laughs> like, it was becoming depressing. Like, it was becoming upsetting. Yeah, that's, that's basically what happened with me and Toe Jim and Earl. I was like, I can't do a third file because those glitches were basically happening at the end of the game. So yeah. I'm like, I can't play through this whole game a third time just to find out I'm going to hit a third new glitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, at one point, I did own the infamous uh, ET Atari game, which I wish I st I Ooh. wish I still had it. <laughs> but uh, uh, if if you don't know, that's if listeners don't know, it's uh, it's gone down as like the worst video game of all time, and was apparently buried out in a desert in California somewhere like all the yeah existing and there's some like I, I've seen some analysis of it where like that that's so overhyped as the worst game compared to some of the other Atari stuff you know it's just the story uh, I think it's even worse the story about how they made twice as many carts as they had sold systems that's that's the part of the story that's better than how bad the game is. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it, yeah, exactly. But I don't know. I mean, I've, I've, I've legit played it, and it's hard to imagine a game being worse. I mean, there's games on Atari that are equally as bad, equal. But yeah, but but in my opinion, like that game is just nothing. Like you. Well, I remember this might have been the angry video game nerd. I can't remember who, but there was someone on the internet I remember who compared it to the Indiana Jones game since it was equally comparable. You know, it's they're both mm. based on Steven Spielberg franchise mm -hmm. things. Sure. Uh, and the Indiana Jones game seemed just as bad. It's just like it, all the games back then. Well, not all of them. Like Pitfall was really ahead of its time and stuff like that, but. A lot of games back then were just really obscure and ridiculous. Yeah. Well, well, and also like there were some, some, some lewd games back then. I'll, I'll just say oh, yeah. that that were that were just downright like just horrible, just absolutely horrible to all all different kinds of people, all different kinds. So I would put those above, but. Usually, yeah. but usually, uh, publications won't talk about those for for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, 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 Atari. It's it's hard to imagine games worse than that. 
And then the other thing that just randomly popped in my head this week, uh, I'm sure you saw it in the notes, was I completely forgot about this slogan Nintendo had during the oh, Nintendo yeah. 64 days. But it was uh, it just just a blast from the past for maybe some listeners who might have forgotten it too. Do you remember the ads that used to end with, do you, uh, Nintendo? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was the slogan. Do you, uh, Nintendo? It's It's like definitely like Beavis and Butthead inspired. Um, I think it was Nintendo 64 era. It could have been Super Nintendo, but I'm pretty sure it was N64. I think it's, it's ex- Everyone remembers Get N or Get Out, but yeah, I yeah. I think it's N64. Um, I would put it right up there with like the dude you're getting a Dell slogan. Yeah, you know. It's oh like, yeah, it's it's very it's very it's very dude. Like yeah, dude, worth- it, the dude wears my car mentality was in back then. Yeah, l- 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 like like. This this was during like the the was up area like era mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, you know what advertising in the late nineties was great like I I, I wouldn't <laughs> say that 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 it, that it wasn't it just it was just very different um, when whenever I think of nineties uh, video game advertising the first thing I always think of is that infamous um, Earthbound magazine ad with the scratch and sniff that apparently smelled like garbage or something. Like it was all about gross out, like making you remember their product by how much they could gross you out. That's kind of cool. Um, I mean, like at, at least they were committing to it, and 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 like and like that's a very strong sense. Like if you experienced it back in the day, like I'm sure you remember it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that that's kind of that's kind of cool. Like like committing to it that way scratch and sniff is also like a very like 90s thing in my opinion or prior i don't know uh did you see the slogan that i included in your notes um let me scroll up Uh, oh yeah the touching is good from i from nintendo ds that's not one i remember but i'm I'm, i believe they did it (laughs) yep touching is good that that was from uh 2004 Nintendo DS wow. days um and that Mistake. and that and that caused quite a bit of controversy and I can't I can't even I I would imagine in Japanese that would sound bad uh, yeah I, I would imagine I I'd imagine that like like uh that, 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 that that's like a universal like any language probably not going to come out right uh Especially if you are a maker of games that, yeah, I, I digress. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get into some news. I, I'd like to do, before this becomes the Kirby show, I think I'll do the non-Kirby news okay. items. Yeah. And, and then and then we'll get into, into Kirby talk for the rest of the podcast. Because it's Kirby week. Um, so the, the first one that I have here, I don't know if you saw this news story, is that the Metal Gear Solid resolution and frame rate chart mm-hmm. was posted by Konami. Not surprisingly, it's going to run 30 frames per, per second on Switch with 1080p docked, 720p handheld. Great. So, I mean, that's about what the original games were running on. So I saw some people complaining that at 30 frames per second, you can't time things properly, but I don't know how true that is. Hmm. How, they were, yeah, they were, they were uh, making a, a leap from this to how Mario RPG is going to perform and talking about the timed hits. And I'm like, well, if it's a main mechanic of the game, Nintendo's going to make sure it works, you know? And, same same thing with these games. If it's if it's something important, it's either going to work or they're going to patch it eventually. <laughs> I would just, I mean, I would be looking at other at other games that are that are fast paced or or use like more tactical precision that are also running at thirty frames on Nintendo Switch, um, because like I don't know. Like this is not a great example, but isn't Mortal Kombat the the, the new one running at thirty frames per second? Um, uh, I I don't know, but uh, there's other older games that have similar specs, um, including uh, what just came, uh, including like Red Dead, 
uh, is running at the same specs. So it's mm-hmm. it's not a surprise. Um, I you know as I said, I play handheld, and handheld I can't really tell the difference between 720 and 1080. And um, uh, 30 is pretty solid. Like like I run a lot of games on Steam at 40 and 40 megahertz, and I think it's pretty decent. So I I think I'm- yeah, and I don't know. I know it's different for some game players but for me even though i'm not going to buy this day one if i ever do buy the metal gear solid collection on my switch the whole appeal of that is just being able to play those games again on a modern console and also on the switch now they're portable i don't really care that they look all that great as long as they play as at least as well as they did on their original system you know i'm not looking for them to look like a PlayStation five game or anything. I think they're going to look pretty good. And I, I think so too, especially since I remember the GameCube version of the, the, they did a GameCube remake of the first metal gear, metal gear solid. And it looked great. Uh, and I, I think, or maybe that's not the switch version. I don't know. I, I think I, now that I say it out loud, I think I remember reading that the switch wasn't getting that the other systems were, I don't know. But yeah, it's. I think they're going to look fantastic. It's it's going to be great to revisit them. I was not one of the people who got upset when they did the old switcheroo in Metal Gear Solid Two. Um, did you play that back in the day? I think a little bit. Yeah, that game I was obsessed with back in the day, and like. I probably played like three hundred hours of that back in the day, and I. I, I never cared. I, I didn't learn until much later on. There's a few things I learned later on in life when I got on the internet and saw people say like, oh, remember when everybody hated this? And I was like, no one I knew hated that back then. You know, like, and that was one of them is that when you had to play as Raiden instead of Snake, they were like, remember when everyone was mad about that? I was like, no, everyone I knew just loved the game. Yeah, th- th- that's sometimes just, 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 internet discourse as well um yep like like re- remember when everyone felt the same way i feel um this is yeah <laughs> this, this this is actually going to come up in in a in the kirby discussion as well uh okay yeah it, it, yeah so um do wait do do we have a, do we have a price point on these games is it is, is it 60 do we uh, probably. Let me do a quick yeah, search. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know if we do. It's probably sixty if it's if it's uh, if it's three games. Yeah, according to my quick Google search, it's sixty. Yeah. Um, Fifty nine ninety nine. Suggested retail price. This this would be. I mean, I mean, for me, this would be a good like like Black Friday game for me or something like that. Like, like I, I could, I could see my, I could see myself at, like, at like thirty percent off. And again, if, I, yeah. if I talk about price, I'm sure that, yeah, I'm sure the eShop will have sales on it because they, they have sales on similar collections, like the, the Grand Theft Auto trilogy they have on there was recently on sale for like twenty bucks, I think, or something. No, that's great. Yeah, so. yeah, I, I bought, I bought that on sale, not, not for that price, but that, that that's great. Everything's going on sale now because, like I said last week, I'm trying to not buy new games. So, like, <laughs> I'm trying to finish the ones I have. So, like, this week, uh, the Chrono Cross HD remake that I want to get on Switch went on sale for, like, $10. And I'm like, uh, I, no, I'm, I, I'm, my budget is spent for the year. I am waiting. But, yeah, it, it, isn't that always the way? Here's a Here's a story from this week that's similar um the nintendo 64 controllers that nintendo makes for the switch you know what i'm talking about sure um i felt like those only came into stock anytime i didn't have the money for them and it's like uh, every time you like don't have it the internet decides here you don't have money well your games are on sale oh here you don't have money here's that thing you've been waiting to buy like (laughs) It's now available. Limited time. 
Um, but I finally got one this week, so I'm happy. I'm happy for that. Anytime we get Nintendo 64 in the randomizer now, I can play it with that original controller and relive the memories. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. Th- those are those are always going for a lot. So I guess I guess they're they're worth uh, the, 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 the they're they're worth having. And and what like like I guess I haven't been. I, I I don't pay attention, and then when I do a pay pay attention, I'm surprised. But what happened to like Nintendo resale markets? Because I've I've realized that like eventually I do want to get a uh, a nice like new uh, new uh, 3ds because I still have like I would still have reason a reason to have it, uh, but like oh my god like. Some of these like 3DS XLs cost more than a Switch. <laughs> like wow, I didn't know that. Like that's crazy. I still have mine. Um, but like you said, eventually you're gonna have to get a new. Eventually, like screens burn out and stuff. You're or just wear and tear. You might want a new one just to, for it to look nicer. And that's a shame. Y- yeah, or like um. Like, or, there's sometimes sometimes I feel like Nintendo supports scalpers because they do so many like limited edition, limited run, limited this, pre-order this, and it's like it, it all just goes to scalpers. Like you're not helping the fans. Very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, very true. And uh, but I, I think I think in J- I think in Japan they don't have that issue. I, I think I think probably I, I think the rules are a little bit are, are a little bit different over there, uh, but uh, uh, Game Boy SPs as well are like I don't know if they're like going up in price, but like when I see them over here, they're going for like one hundred fifty dollars or something. Like it it seems like I I, I, I perhaps it's because it's I because, think people mod those a lot. That's why. Yeah, I think people I, I think people mod them. But I also think people are like nostalgic over. I, I think I think there's like that's true. It it is twenty years old. It's in that window. Yeah, and 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 it's like I think I know. I don't want to say like females, but like I, I know people that like have them because they're like because of the size of them. Like they're like they're compact, they're easy, and that's what they like. That's what they had when they were like in middle school or high school, perhaps. You know, like they're in that age. Range. I still have mine. It's in the attic, well, doing nothing. Well, hold, on, hold, hold on to it, I guess. I mean, like, anytime I want to play a Game Boy Advance game, I play on my. I have a, a Raspberry Pi with all the ROMs on it, so mm-hmm. those are cool. I'm probably never going to turn that on again. Yeah, but yeah. Well, hold on to it, I guess. Yeah, the Pikmin can carry it away, like they do in Pikmin yeah. Four. Um, so the there's the only other non Kirby thing is this rumor that we could talk about the red dead redemption Two rumor because I think it was, was it Brazil that rated it? Oh God, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I have, I have the, the non story. Yeah. I, yeah. I have the, the article. No, wait, do I have it here? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Following uh, blah, blah, blah. Share red dead Re- redemption Two received in uh, ESRB rating on who, what country was this? Brazil. So anyway, the ratings for the Switch. So now people are like, is Red Dead Redemption 2 coming to Switch? I don't think it is, people. I I don't. I don't think it'll work on a Switch. It's a PlayStation 4 game. So if anything, this is maybe the Switch 2 shares the same ESRB. I think I think it's a mistake. I I think so I, too. I, 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 I think this is nothing. Like I saw when I was researching the Wario games that Best Buy had a Switch Wario game listed as a 3DS game. It just happens. Yeah, or like things will pop up on like the the the, the Walmart online shop and like uh, somewhere in Europe if they have Walmart over there. I don't know. Like uh, I I think it's a mistake in like and like since when does the Brazilian government leak video game news <laughs> like and it, and it was so dumb it's like and i put and i put it i put in our notes that that this is this is just a result of of slow news and then we had people on on twitter or x like sharing the screenshot 
misinterpreting the screenshot because they don't speak Portuguese. And I don't speak Portuguese, but I know that's not what they said. Like, like they're like, like they were saying like, oh, this, this report came out in 2018. No, it says it was produced in 2018. Like just, just like, this is, this is not, this is nothing. I know, I know I added it. I know I'm the one that added it to our notes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So now it's time for Kirby talk. Kevin, in your your notes, you, you did, you did bring up another Nintendo life article that I did. Oh yeah. I I just had that there for a slow episode week, but we can talk about it if you want. Um, the, The article was about, can you spoil, uh, can you can you spoil a Mario game? And this is in reference to spoilers, like spoilers, right? Yes. So, as far as spoilers go, um, well, what what do you think? Um, I don't really think so. Uh, it, it was something I wanted to have as like a general discussion. So I was I was gonna save it in case we just had like a slow episode. But I just don't like. I don't know. I don't really have a take on it. I, I, I'm not very big on caring about spoilers. So I'm like the wrong one to ask. You know what I mean? Like I, I learn everything about a movie before I see it because here's my take on spoilers. When I was growing up, you actively tried to get as many spoilers as possible. In fact, you saw a movie because your friend gave you spoilers. It, when you were when you were growing up, you'd be like, "Oh, you got to see this movie. It's got this and this and this, and then this happens, and it's crazy. You got to see it." And then you go watch it, and you're like, "Wow, that's what he was talking about. It was crazy. This is awesome." Um, <laughs> so I never, I'm not one that's ever really cared about spoilers. There's like certain, like obviously, I don't want a twist ending ruined for me, but I I feel like that's a whole different category. Um, so like I feel like the term spoiler has grown to almost mean knowing anything about the thing before you see it. And, and the only thing I really care about is like, don't ruin a plot point that I'm obviously not supposed to know ahead of time. Other than that, I don't care. So yeah, I don't think you can spoil a Mario game though, because they're not really heavy on story. So if that's what they mean, then no. (laughs) Well, as far as Nintendo goes, I put down that I think Nintendo does a great job with their trailers just overall um that that's one that's one thing i I think i could say just overall like whether it's animal crossing zelda mario whatever it is i think they do a really good job with avoiding spoilers and or or but the internet does an equally good job of like over analyzing them like sorry to interrupt but i want to interject this here is like you remember i saw that youtube video where that person had dissected the mario rpg trailer and he figured out that there were time attacks i mean uh party like the group attacks before they officially announced it just from over analyzing the trailer it's crazy the things people can figure out sure Sure, that that's true, and that's what they in, enjoy doing uh, as well. Uh, uh, so yeah, that, that, that's very true. People overanalyze, which I guess then creates spoilers. Um, I think, like personally, like spoilers are either about self control or level of interest or level of care, like. But like you said, like, for example, um, when a new Star Wars comes out, I will not look up any spoilers because I don't care, you know. But for video games, it just depends. Like, sometimes I'll do none. Sometimes I'll do a lot. It just kind of depends. But... Yeah, and I'll bet a lot of it is it depends on the type of game it is. And back to Mario, I don't think it really matters. Like, Mario games play i mean i guess you could spoil like a certain ability uh, that like i could see you playing the game and nintendo not wanting you to know ahead of time oh and when you get to this part of the level you're gonna like like when you grew to giant size mario in this new super mario brothers game i didn't see that coming the first time and it kind of did blow my mind Mm -hmm. but i probably would have still liked stomping around as giant mario just as much if i knew it was coming sure yeah 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 exactly um, but yeah, I think you know as far as uh, as far as friends go, uh, 
I think avoiding spoilers or like just saying just the right thing or just saying enough is a sign of maturity. And it's also a sign that you might care about the moment. Like I was thinking about when when they showed the the Mario RPG for the first time, like it, in the Nintendo Direct. I yeah. when, when I saw it, when I was watching the live stream, I I picked up my phone and uh, and I was like gonna message you. I was because I was like really excited, but then I was like, there's a good chance he hasn't seen it yet. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I, True. I just messaged you saying something happened. I'm very excited. I can't wait for you to see it or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, I was in disbelief for like the first thirty seconds of that minute long trailer. I thought it was going to be like Mario RPG themed Mario Kart tracks or like, like, you know what I mean? I thought they were showing the visuals of Mario RPG, but it wasn't going to be the game. It was going to be something else. And then I was like, Oh, like a, when it kept going oh, and they started showing like battles and stuff, I was like, Oh no, they're doing the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Th- there's all that, that, that moment where it's like, no, this is a game. This, this is a game. Yeah. This is a game. Um, so, I, I think that's a time which because, because like I wasn't going to tell you just in case you hadn't seen it because I wanted for you to have that moment so I could hear about you having that moment. You know? Well, it's also like I feel like there's a section of the culture now that are kind of obsessed with reactions. You know, there's the whole reaction video uh, craze. And it's, it's just like, I'm not going to lie. I watch some of them too. I love what, like, like looking up on YouTube, people reacting to some of my favorite songs and stuff. And it's just like, uh, I don't know. There's just, uh, most of them are fake, but that's, that's neither here nor there, but, um, it is just something about human nature. We like to hear how people reacted to things. Yeah. There's, there's lots of reasons for that. Um, uh, react content is, um, create a lot of controversy especially in these last like few weeks <laughs> uh just just uh the issue like people bringing up fair use a lot and people having debates around all of those things um i think that's a, that's one reason why i like it sometimes just depending on what i'm consuming but also like mm. i enjoy i enjoy it because sometimes i'm just like hanging out by myself and it's like it's like i'm like the uh the other person at the table or like the third person it's the same reason why i listen to podcasts you know like i turn on a podcast and i like to imagine that i'm like just the other guy at the table drinking coffee you know listening you know that's my favorite kind hopefully nintendo you know is like that for you guys (laughs) Well, this has nothing to do with Nintendo, but just a quick recommendation. If you want some good reactions, uh, search for people who have never heard the song Freak on a Leash by Korn. (laughs) And then when they get to the part where he's scatting vocals, it is so, so nice to see their reactions to what the heck is going on here. (laughs) Um, But yeah. Uh, Anyway, on to our Kirby, our Kirby coverage. Corn Kirby, same thing. I kind of tried to connect it. Um, Kirby and the Amazing Mirror will be coming to Nintendo Switch Online pretty much the day you're hearing this, because it says September 29th, which is Friday. We just covered a Kirby game, and then they added one in. Zero sum. Yeah, so that that is <laughs> um, that is 17, you said, right? I think um on the switch yes. yeah there's 17 games on the switch there's uh, oh i have it right here there's 39 kirby games total in the franchise wow so so this this is interesting because um not no surprise i've i've played like if there's 39 games i've i've played about 10 percent of these games i would estimate uh so this is not one that I've played, but this like early 2000s Kirby uh, timeline 
is really interesting. So Amazing Mirror came out for a Game Boy Advance in 2004. Um, so just to go back a little bit, uh, Crystal Shards, which we are, we're, we're doing today, uh, that came out in 2000. Uh, 2002 was Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. 2003, if you remember it, was Kirby Air Ride, which I totally put out of my mm-hmm. mind. <laughs> I totally forgot about that game. Uh, yep. The racing game on GameCube. And then something I also forgot or didn't know in 2001 was the Kirby anime which which oh, went on for I didn't know which that. went on for like 2 years. So I think by the time Amazing Mirror came out it's kind of an interesting point in the in the Kirby timeline because they're moving away from Kirby Dreamland and Crystal Shards was pretty much Kirby Dreamland 4. Uh Mm-hmm. It kind of seems like they don't really know what to do at this point. Uh, well, I heard, I haven't played this game either, but from what I've been hearing people say, it sounds like it's like a Metroidvania, and it, it that has me really interested in it because I feel like with Kirby's abilities system where he copies abilities, the Metroidvania formula, like, it, it sounds amazing. Like you, you go to another area, get an ability and come back to a different area to use it. Like that, that on paper, that sounds great. I hope it's as good in, in execution as it is in my mind. It seems pretty cool. Uh, because it's, it seems like it's mostly like, this is very heavily a multiplayer game. Um, even like the story is about like, Oh, they Kirby gets hit with a sword in the beginning. And then Kirby. Yeah, it's so weird that Kirby is so sword yeah. heavy. You he, know, like he doesn't look like he'd be involved with swords, but they're in all the well, games. Well, it's very strange. Like he, he gets hit with a sword, and then he he becomes four different four different Kirby's. My favorite being the green one, and but but then he kind of he kind of likes it. He, he's kind of like, yeah, this is cool. You know, like I'm four Kirby's. Like, um, <laughs> so I I think this is. Um, and also, uh, it's a four person. It's a multiplayer, open world side scrolling game. Like after the first area, it's completely open. So that's pretty cool. Like an open world multiplayer game in two thousand four. Um, I think it's going to be a great addition to the online. Well, that's the thing that's about a- the Kirby titles. It probably is going to be a great addition because, like. They they don't tend to get below C tier. Like they the, the the titles are very consistent. They're either amazing or they're like, yeah, that's okay for kids. But it's never like, oh man, that game's unplayable. Kirby doesn't have anything like that in his library. Yeah. Oh, and and this game also uh, it features uh, Kirby's Smash move set. Uh, you can you can obtain his his um his moves from smash brothers in this game so that that's incorporated um that's great because i kept trying to do them in kirby 64 and <laughs> like forgetting that he couldn't do half of those things yeah uh so i'll be interested like this is going to have local and online co-op and i want to see how the, how the local co-op looks uh i i was having a lot of fun uh looking up like old uh old link cable videos of this game like watching four people try to play through a link cable and it takes so long to get set up like people are constantly uh, I bet. going back and forth and it took me back to like we didn't care back then <laughs> like like yeah like it didn't matter like we were we were playing games on our handhelds together like that was awesome but like yeah uh, I'll be. It'll be cool if this is like a very like streamlined, uh, like you hit two players and then you and then you're there. So, well, I wanted to throw this theory out as soon as I saw this news. Uh, I was like, you know what? I'll bet we're gonna see F zero maximum velocity in either the next update or the one after because they've already said it's coming for the expansion pack, 
they, it's probably not going to be the next one because they tend to do expansion pass and then regular and then expansion pass again. So probably not next one, but the one after. And the reason I'm predicting that is because it would help them continue to test the waters for people's interest in F-Zero. And I, I think the only reason it's not the game we got now is because it would have distracted from F-099. So I think... uh I think max. I think before the end of the year, we might get F zero maximum velocity. I like it. Um, F zero F zero ninety nine is a free game, so uh, I like it. And and, and hope and hopefully we're we're moving things forward with with the F zero game. So when I when I saw this Kirby news and I was like, well, we're doing a Kirby game for our spotlight game. Uh, and we're always joking about how there's too many Kirby games. I thought it'd be interesting. I made a list of all the Kirby games available on Switch in release order. And I just thought it'd be fun to touch base on that. So here's all the Kirby fit for Switch right here. In 2018, there was only one Kirby Star Allies, which I just finished. It's pretty good. And that was the only one in 2018. 2019... We had a bunch of Kirby because we had Switch Online. So Kirby's Adventure was on the NES Switch Online. We had Kirby uh, Super Kirby Clash, which was a free-to-play eShop game. It was kind of like a boss battle RPG where you would like level up your character. Uh, was, you know, I think it's still on there. But anyway, uh, then came Kirby's Dreamland Three for the Super Nintendo NSO. Uh, Kirby's Dream Course, Super Nintendo NSO, and Kirby Superstar, Super Nintendo NSO. So that was a big year for Kirby, 2019. He then took 2020 pretty slow. All we had was an e a free eShop game, Kirby Fighters 2. I haven't played any of these Kirby Fighters games, but they're free. <laughs> you know, can't say anything bad about a free mm -hmm. game. And then uh, in 2022, we had Kirby in the Forgotten Land, which came out on Switch, obviously. And then the Nintendo Switch Online followed up with Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards, Kirby's Avalanche on Super Nintendo, and then the eShop added Kirby's Dream Buffet. I don't know if that one's free or not, but I have it listed as eShop. And then 2023, this year alone, we've gotten six Kirby games added on top of the four from the previous year and the five from 2019 he's had some big years it's almost like they lean on him if they've if they've got nothing else going on so this year we got kirby's dreamland on the game boy nso we got kirby's return to dreamland deluxe on the switch we've got kirby's dreamland 2 on the nso kirby tilt and tumble on the game boy nso kirby star stacker on the super nintendo nso and now kirby and the amazing mirror yeah game boy advance nso so that's all 17 switch games in the order that they were added to switch it's, it's crazy uh you know like kirby has become such a such a uh popular and iconic character and there are uh, a very select group of like hardcore Kirby fans that get they get really deep into the Kirby lore and and the Kirby trivia. Oh my god! Like, yeah, ton, they know where Meta Knight tons is. Tons and tons <laughs> and tons of Kirby trivia. Um, but like, man, like I can't think of I can't think of a Nintendo character that is like so popular, like in like the the mainstream world that is it's not a result of their games at all in my opinion it's just that like the the cute pink ball yeah yeah uh, oh he's got the smash brothers angle sure. come i'm sure that that gives but, him some support and uh, no but i agree that most of his games are like kids games like if you read reviews you could pick a random kirby game and check the reception section on wikipedia and the reception usually says that the game was uh received well but criticized for its low difficulty yeah. every single time criticized for its low difficulty well, exactly like you said i mean 
I loved Kirby because of Smash Brothers and because I thought he was awesome. Like I just thought I just thought he was like like really cool. But I I, I never played Kirby games growing up. I th- you know, I because Sean and I played Kirby Dream Course like like it was like it was our Smash Brothers before Smash Brothers because it was a Super Nintendo game. But uh yeah, we played so much Kirby Dream Course, and I don't think it was mattered that it was a Kirby game. We just kind of liked the the dynamics of it. But I, growing up, I, I learned that that was something that was like kind of just an us thing. I, I like nobody played that game. Well, not nobody because it's a Nintendo game. But I haven't found in real life another person who's played that game. Can you name any of the top five best selling Kirby games? Well, because of the install base of the Switch, I'm going to guess Return to Dreamland Deluxe is on there because I saw that that was a pretty big hit. Is that on there? Um, you know what? I don't. I don't see it on my list actually. How about Kirby and the Forgotten? Forgotten Land? Land's number one. Okay, but, but, so that's but, the Switch but, install by base. a lot. And and here's and here's what and I'll just share. Uh, Dream Kirby's Dreamland is number two. So I don't know if my if my list the original yeah, the original the, the Game, Game Boy, Boy one. one. So I don't know if my list combined anything, but oh, number I three see. is a, is another Switch title. Um, number three then would be Star Allies. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, well, I remember it had a lot of good press at the time, which is I think why I bought the game, and then it sat on my Switch for five years until I recently yeah. finished it. I, I I mean, l- listeners, Kevin. I mean, like, if like, it just if you think thirty nine Kirby games is a lot, just I think we should just get ready for a lot more because because yeah. Forgotten Land sold over six million, Star Allies sold four million, and the one in between that is Kirby Dreamland, which has been re released and like it's it's iconic. And like, just like, just the fact that like the Switch is so popular, they get a game like Kirby and for and a Forgotten Land would sell would sell that well. It's just like, I I, I think back to like, so Microsoft, you really want to buy Nintendo, huh? Like, what what, is, what, what <laughs> yeah. is that price even? Because like, well, that reminds me of when the story of. Microsoft saying that they wish there weren't any first party, they wish first party titles weren't a th- uh, uh, exclusives. That's what they said. They said they wish exclusives weren't a thing in video games. And I'm like, you know, I bet Nintendo doesn't wish that because they have all the best exclusives. <laughs> it. Do you think Nintendo wants to share Mario? No. Well, well and, and and also like, and also they're they're buying like they're buying studios for like forty billion dollars. Like you buy a you but you buy studios for that much, you're gonna have exclusives. Like you're you're, you're or, or like yep. at least like timed, like it's gonna be on your system at least first. Like it. So uh, yeah, I, I you know people people might think that like looking at the the numbers for Kirby and th- they might want to compare it to something like Zelda. And think it's not that much. It's 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 it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like like, I think now is the time, and I think we're we're just going to mm-hmm. get more and more Kirby games. And I think well, those were very well received too. Uh, Kurt, like I said, Kirby Star Allies had great reviews at the time, and Forgotten Land. It's on my list of games I want to play at some point. It's apparently really good. So yeah, it, you you've got the recognition of kirby and you combine that with a decent game on a system that sold like 130 million units it's gonna sell so just as a comparison point i want to throw in here though we keep clowning on kirby so i wanted to look this up real quick there are over 130 mega man games according to the wikipedia article oh 130 mega man games that's not a surprise i mean 39 is a, is a lot or the right amount depending on on how you're looking at it like it's it's this franchise has been around for 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 quite a while now and i've always said like this will be like my third time saying 
like there should be 39 Yoshi games. I'm not going to play them. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not going to play I'm not going to play most of them, but like there's a there's a clear oh, option. I know it comes up all the time, but I feel like Yoshi and Kirby are very comparable. They're both games that are geared towards younger children with a main character that eats his enemies and uh has a lot of side scrolling games uh in like leafy tree areas. Oh, I, I and 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 I and I, and I love I love both of those characters. Like l- yeah, like for sure. And and it, and it's hard for me I, like do, do people hate Yoshi? I don't know. Like like are 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 there are there are there no. Yoshi haters out there? <laughs> I nope. I refuse to believe yeah, there I, are. I, I doubt it. Leave a comment below on Spotify if you hate yeah. Yoshi. Yeah, and then 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 unsubscribe. I guess I don't know. Like 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 this, this, this <laughs> might not be a. This might not like. I'm I'm surprised you're 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 still here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that brings us to the spotlight game this week. Kirby sixty four, the Crystal Shards, a game that I wanted when it came out, but didn't get until I was an adult. You, you know those games, like you're, you don't end up getting them till like ten years later. Uh, <laughs> so it came out in Japan March twenty fourth of two thousand and June twenty seventh of two thousand in North America. There's 72 shards to collect spread across six planets with three or four, depending on which planet, stages, and then a boss fight. Sound familiar? Pretty yeah, formulaic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like the three getting the gold coins yeah. in Mario. Um, the basic mechanic, yeah, is there's three shards hidden in each stage. Collect them all like the gold coins in, in a side-scrolling Mario, in a new Super Mario Bros. game. Um, I, I didn't know this. The first fact I saw when doing the research, this is another game that was originally going to be a 64 disc drive game, but then the disc drive failed. So they, they scaled it down and made it a regular Nintendo 64 title. But when I read that, I searched and searched and searched. I couldn't find any details on what the 64 disc drive version did differently because this seems like such a basic game i'm like how could this not fit on a six nintendo 64 card well you know with with ocarina of time you could imagine how much bigger the game would have been on yeah. disc drive but this it, no it was, idea i think it was supposed to be a lot bigger I, I i think i think there was i think they had that ambition and i i think i think they were planning to have like Doubled the amount of playable characters. Like, like they were they were planning to have Adelaide be a playable character in the beginning. Um, and Is that the the yeah, painter, the girl? Well, that makes sense because I noticed that Adelaide's on all the artwork on the instruction manual, the box art, like the the main title screen, like every very heavily yeah. focused. And 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 that's a big bullet point. I just need to know because Adelaide. Um, Apparently is very heavily criticized because uh, does not appear in any other Kirby games. I don't think. I don't believe. And I, um, I'm gonna look that up real quick. I think if she's not in, um, perhaps the the one that I just played, um, Star Allies, they they at least have her as a power up because. Hold on, I think she might be in Star Allies. Let me see if that, if she's called something different. Um, and just keeps de- sending me to her Cur- Wiki Kirby page. <laughs> um, is there like appearances? Other appearances: Kirby Star Allies. Yep, she's in that, and Super Kirby Clash, and then she just has cameos okay. in other games. But that's okay. pretty much it. Okay, so so. A recent, a fairly recent one. Okay, all right. But I, I, I wonder. I only remember because it's a really good power up. It like so there's there's like canvases hidden in the game, and if you have her power up, she'll obviously she'll paint on the canvas or not power up. She's your friend because that's the allies part of Star Allies, and if she's in your if she's in like your party, I guess you'd call it. She'll paint on the canvas and like you unlock like things with it. So I think. 
there was a bigger intention for this character in this game because apparently she's pretty heavily criticized like a lot of a lot of people who like this game don't like this character because of the fit in the game do you have any thoughts on this i'm with my limited kirby knowledge uh didn't stick out to me at all but now that you mention it it is something where i'm like wait a minute she wasn't in any of the other kirby games so but it i don't know maybe i'm coming at it from a kirby star allies point of view her ability fit fine in that game well i'll add on to that because i'm because i'm the same way i i didn't it didn't stick out to me until it was brought up in like in different reviews that i was in that i was reading uh but for example like um i've heard that like that kirby is a bit is a bit slow in this game and when i've played yes. it slow in a lot of his games because again back to star allies i i remember constantly being like i wish there was a run button yeah. you have to like do that thing where you double hit forward right. yeah and I hate that. so, so like when I hear that, I'm like, okay, like yeah, he's slow, but like, I, I I don't really have a good way. I don't have like a good comparison. So I was like, sure, like I was like, I I I I, I guess so. So, um, I don't really have a comparative bias when it comes to these games. That I think like a a real Kirby fan, someone who played the other games um, surrounding this time. And and this and this was this supposed to be Dreamland Four or was it or should it have been Dreamland Four? I don't remember now. I think it could. I don't. I didn't see anything about it being planned to be, but you could have called this Dreamland Four, and I wouldn't have batted an eye. It's very similar in gameplay. It doesn't change a whole lot from three. So I mean, now it's in two point five D. But other than that, it's not a whole lot different. So that it it I'm stammering here, but it could have it could have done that. Um, I I have news on more more news on Adelaide. So it says right here on her page on the Kirby Wiki, Wick Kirby. Um, after 16 years of complete absence, so she wasn't in the franchise for 16 years. She makes a cameo. In Kirby Planet Ro Robobot as a collectible sticker, and then she was basically fully in Kirby Star Allies the next year. So that's how that went. She sat it out for sixteen that's years. That's cool. Um, there, there have been there have been like, I think there was like some characters from like Super Mario Brothers two or something that they had like brought back. I, I'm, some Mario game, I think, like they've done that before, where, where mm -hmm. you see. Well, I know Toadette was a big mm -hmm. deal. Um, that was like a change that fans wanted that eventually made it into the game. Um, uh, but looking back on on this Kirby game, it's I thought it was very refreshing for it to be like a two point five D game. We've said before it they basically play like a side scrolling game and there's only as far as i could tell five side scrolling games on the nintendo 64 total there's yoshi story guillemon's great adventure mischief makers this mm. kirby game and if you count it sections of midway's greatest arcade hits so those are the only side scrolling nintendo 64 games huh that's true that's true, and and it looks great. I mean, uh, I didn't have any any sort of feelings about about the soundtrack, uh, but I think uh, graphically, I think it, it looks great. Like some of the some of the environments when 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 they're talking in like the overworld don't look so great, but I I do like the 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 low poly like characters in this and i wonder if uh if we if we care about graphics you know almost like less now than we did 
back then because I quite like the the style graphically of this game. Yeah, I love 2.5D games in general. I wish there were more of them. Um, this, I, I think the reason we didn't see stuff like this on the Nintendo 64 a lot is because I, I was looking at reviews of the game and a lot of like contemporary rev contemporary reviews from when it came out and there were a lot of criticisms saying that the game wasn't innovative enough and i interpreted that as being like oh this is side scrolling is the super nintendo style you should have tried to make this a, a 3d kirby game you know because that's what everything was doing at the time and I, I think that's why maybe they held back a lot on that and but from modern gaming's perspective it's it's got its own following now and it's like man i wish there was more nintendo 64 side scrolling games because they're awesome innovative i'm not sure um i could think of a couple elements of this game mechanics that could be but i'm not sure if, if i'd go as far as to say innovative um as far you said you didn't uh didn't care for the soundtrack on this and and i did have a note on that too is i also noticed it was kind of bland but at the same time it made me think of that kirby main theme that is in almost all of his games is very underrated that thing is awesome that um that needs that like that needs to be up there in the conversation with some of the other Nintendo franchise themes. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it didn't really stick out. And this might even... I don't know if it's in this game. I didn't hear it. Like, But I'm just talking yeah. Kirby in general. But I don't know if it's in Kirby uh, 64. Should be. If it's I not, mean, I would compare the soundtrack to something of like a, like, like, like a Yoshi story, which I think when we, when we reviewed it, I said that I like that soundtrack, but ah, whatever. Uh, yep. um, but I, it, it just <laughs> Yoshi's story is also a uh, lot better looking than this. I know you just praise the visuals, but yes, yeah, yeah it, yes. it's a lot better looking. It, <laughs> yes, um, I, perhaps perhaps it's it's like it's like the style, you know, it's um the the style of it that I I that I enjoy, mm -hmm. despite not really. Yeah, it looks almost like a. It almost looks like it's a pop up book or like a play, which is funny because this came out before Paper Mario, but it almost has that Paper Mario look to it. It's almost Paper Kirby in certain areas, yeah. and they even have the in between levels are are a crayon like a coloring book. Hey, that would be a cool aesthetic for a video game, like coloring book and like everything's kind of like colored outside the lines and stuff, like Chalk Zone. Like you remember that cartoon? That'd be a cool art style for a game. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Uh, another fun fact about this game: uh, in the Japanese version, they have um, onigiri as a as a as an item that you can pick up, but in the U.S. version, they changed it to a sandwich, which I think that's I think that's interesting because this game came out in 2000, and I have to imagine out of the Ha the half million or so U.S. people who bought this game, I have to imagine a lot of those people watch Pokemon or they watch anime, and they wouldn't they wouldn't have been thrown mm. off by Onigiri. I, I, I think I think I think that no, I think yeah, that like, was overthinking. Think, like they either would have not thought about it, or they would have recognized it. They probably would have recognized it. Well, I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive it's in Smash Brothers, which was already out at the time. I'm pretty sure you can eat it in that. I, I, I'm, I'm sure it is, but like, like the first thing that popped up on my mind was like was like Pokemon. Like, like I, I learned yeah a lot about about that culture, and I, and I, I don't even know if that's like stupid to say or not, but I, I, I did like like it. it it would have not thrown me off at all had I played this game back then. Um, so that, that, that's, a, that's a little uh, fun fact. Uh, as I said, I, innovative, perhaps not, but I do. I, I would say that I think this is a game of missed opportunities for me. And this is even a game where I think 
yeah. they could go back and tweak a couple things for my liking, <laughs> and I would, um, and it would be like a a plus game for me. Like I like, um, well, that's the thing that stood out so much to me is this feels more like it was like an early release Nintendo sixty four game when in real like like how i don't want to say bland but how like you said there's a lot more opportunities to improve this game that they could have done and it, it seems like an early almost a launch i think this would have killed as a launch title but where it released uh, i have in my notes here let me find it there's only a few games that kind of matter for the 64 after this uh um where did i put that it was like there was only like a handful here it is so it came out at the end of the nintendo 64's life um basically the gamecube is like very close to releasing when this game comes out um the only games after it worth mentioning in my opinion were tony hawk pro skater 2 and 3 conquer's bad fur day Pokemon Stadium 2, Paper Mario, and Majora's Mask. Other than those games, after this, the system's kind of done. Every time I hear Pro Skater 3 coming out on N64, it just blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was the last game released, unless you by, count that one that was released by, like by a year far, ago. I, I, remember, I remember reading about it. I remember seeing it at Funko Land and being like, what? <laughs> like... Like, yep. it came out so late. Um, so, so yeah, you know, so I do want to go back because there's a good chance if you're listening, you haven't played this game. Um, they do, they do, they have the, the combo, the, com the combo abilities in this game, which I apologize. I don't know in how many other Kirby games they use this, but there's basically seven elements, seven power ups. That you can combine with any other power up, including its own, to create a combination, mm -hmm. um, which overall makes uh, 28 combinations overall. Uh, it makes for a pretty cool chart. Uh, for me, go ahead. I found I found an article of the top 10 according okay. to Game Rant. Yeah, if you want to hear it, that. Yeah, because uh, I have mine. Go ahead. Uh, Okay, so here's according to Game Rant, their top ten favorite Kirby combinate Kirby shards combinations. So if you combine the ice and the needle, you get a snowflake, okay. and you hold down the attack button, and he becomes like a little sharp, like stabby snowflake. Uh, if you combine the spark and the stone, you get the electric tether, and it like it's like a big boulder at the end of a bunch of electricity that he's swinging around. That one's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't do this one. If you combine combine Cutter and Spark, you get a double-edged sword. He looks like he's holding like Darth Maul's lightsaber in the F Star Wars Episode One. This thing looks really cool. I did not get that. Um, if you combine the Cutter and the Needle, you get the Bear Trap, which I got that one and got rid of it quickly. You can only really attack up with it. It's kind of not... doesn't belong at number seven. Um... <laughs> Needle and stone, you get the drill, and this looks a lot like the drill yeah. in Mario Wonder. Uh, wonder if they uh, wonder if they took from this. If you combine the bomb and the burn, you get fireworks. Yeah. If you if you combine uh, cutter and burn, you get a flaming sword. That was yeah. like the first that, one. That, I that got. one's super cool. I think I think in the first level. Yeah, um, this one I got and I I really love I liked it. Um, if you combine ice and spark, Kirby turns into a refrigerator, and he like opens the refrigerator door to like throw food at enemies, <laughs> which might be referenced in in Forgotten Land. I don't know. It might be. If you combine two bombs, you get mm -hmm. seeker missiles. And then the number one they have is if you combine bomb and cutter, you get an exploding yep. shuriken. Yep, throw the, those yep, ninja the, stars that, bomb bomb is like the most fun, like you can combine bomb with something and and, and you're you're yeah. in for a good time i think um but you know i think the combinations along with 
there are 81 enemy cards in the game. I think not having a good completion, not having something tangible for the completion of this, I think is a missed opportunity. Like, I would love to see, like, mm-hmm. like what if you had to beat, what if you, what if you got something, this is a half-baked idea, um, by beating every boss with every combination. I don't know. Like, like that, 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 that's a lot. But, like, I imagine, like, what if there was, like... Those are the type of things you'd see rumors of on the early internet days. And it, and it would be like, did you know that you can unlock Luigi in Kirby if you just yeah. do, do or, this? Or I imagine, like, what if there was, like, a Kirby roguelite? You know, like like where you had to like go, where you had to like go through the same levels, and then throughout you got the, you got different combinations that you could use, and then at the end, like you got a completion of like okay, you beat this boss at this combo, you get a little check mark which feels good, and uh, I, I I don't know like again like I don't know what these buffs or these power ups or what what the incentive would be. I just know that. For me, um, I I kind I, I kind of lose the completionist part if I don't feel like I have something to work towards, and the fact that like they introduced enemy cards, I love car- I love trading cards or cards, and mm-hmm. you don't really do anything with them though. Like you you can kind of learn about the enemies, but if you get a duplicate. There's nothing you can do. Um, so you're basically just going through and trying to collect every card and hoping that you can land on the card and hoping that it's not one that you have. So I just think I think there could have been more, in my opinion. For sure. Yeah, like I said, it, it feels like um, it feels like there's a lot of missed opportunities in this game and and with how simple it is as is. I think I think this would have killed as a launch title. I think you put this out with obviously Mario 64 was the big one. And then but everyone had like that second game they would get. Some people got Wave Race, some people got Shadows of the Empire. There wasn't a whole lot at the beginning there. Pilot Wings um that might have been it for the first few months. This in that conversation, if you've got like a little kid who can't play um who can't play uh, Shadows of the Empire. Couldn't think of the name of it because <laughs> there's they're shooting in that game. Um, then I could see you buying Mario and Kirby for the launch of Nintendo 64. But for some reason, this is something I wanted to talk about. For some reason, Kirby games always come out at the end of systems. And this is something that people picked up on for Zelda when they were saying, oh, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the last Switch game because they always end on a Zelda game. Uh, Kinda, but also Kirby too, because I I took this down in my notes. So Kirby's Adventure was one of the last games on the NES. Then Kirby Dreamland 3 came out in 1997 on the Super Nintendo. Like the Nintendo 64 had been out of full. That was like that's after when I'm saying this game should have came out <laughs> on the Nintendo 64. Um. And then, and then you had this. Like I said, there were only like five titles after this one that really mattered on the Nintendo 64. There was a Kirby game in de- this one. Didn't I'm counting it? It was in development for the GameCube. It wasn't released, but there was going to be a game, a Kirby game for the GameCube in 2006, like a full year after the Wii had been out. So it's like they always keep putting these Kirby games out at the very end. Uh, Kirby's Dreamland Collection comes out on the Wii in 2012, same year the Wii U launches. Um, so I'm sure we're going to get a Kirby game next year, right before the Switch 2. Uh, you know, well, why not? You know, excuse me, why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make it a 2.5 game, because I love them. 2.5D, like this little sides. I love when you go around the circle rooms and you see like the center of the room that that gets me every time. I love that. Yeah, we'll we'll have we'll have at least at least one 2.5 releasing next year. We'll, we'll have Peach releasing next year. 
Um, and yeah, yeah I, could, I could see Kirby before then. Uh, I can't can't remember like when Forgotten Land was announced to when it was released, but but yeah, I I, I, I did I did love the the like the the post apocalyptic Kirby in a uh, in Forgotten Land. I thought that was pretty. Cool. Perhaps they'll stay with that. Um, this is. And with that, I'm this ready is, this, to rank this. This is a difficult game. one, I guess. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I hope that we've said some things on here that are strictly just constructive because I don't feel lots of negatives towards this game, but I'm going to rank it quite a bit below Kirby's Dream Land. And I think... Yeah, I agree. I think it's while it is a good game, it is a weaker Kirby game. I I put it below Dreamland as well. It but at, go ahead. Uh, number seventeen. Uh, if you can help me out there, I keep dropping my I keep dropping my mic yeah. on my table. Um. Uh. <laughs> there you go. Got it. Uh, got it. So I'm putting it below all of those GB those GBA Mario games. Uh, for reference, Kirby's Dreamland was number ten on my list. Uh, I think Dreamland is a must play. I think so. I think Crystal Shards is a great game for the online system because, despite not not being too sure about the replayability, I don't think you need to be worried about replayability for the online system. Like, yeah, sure, it's nice, but like you can uh, playing it once, trying it out, I think is worth it for sure. Yeah. I agree. And this is the type of game where like play two levels, it'll take you five minutes and you'll know based on that if you want to finish the game or not. So I'm going to put it at number 16. So one rank higher than you. (laughs) And that puts it on my list right below. I thought I I enjoyed my time with Castlevania bloodlines a little more and I enjoyed, and I enjoyed, um, crystal shards a little more than i enjoyed demon's crest so it's above demon's crest it's this happy-go-lucky bright cartoony game splitting up these two yeah, I'm, dark I'm, yeah, I'm listening games. to make these comparisons like it's like yeah i yeah, i like a little kirby a little bit more than castlevania like it's like, it's like <laughs> a little less no a little less i liked a, castlevania a yeah, little more uh, exactly Bloodlines, by the way. Castlevania 4 would be much higher on my list if they had added to the service. Um, All right, so let's find out what we're playing next week. Okay, so next week we are playing Comic Zone on the Sega Genesis. So I've played this game a few times, and all I remember is it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up, and it's very difficult (laughs) so i'm probably going to be utilizing save states to get through this thing uh to to finally see some of the levels i never got to see growing up nice more genesis okay we're we're knocking these out yep we got uh almost 40 games done now we got 30 we've done 37 almost as many kirby games all right so if you'd like to tell us something about kirby Send us an email, nintendotherapypod at gmail.com. We're on Twitter slash X Ninten- at Nintendo Therapy. We got the Nintendo Therapy on Reddit. Leave a comment below on Spotify. And always remember, we are Nintendo fans, not Nintendo experts. So if you want to correct us, do that too. And we will talk to you next week about some uh, some Comic Zone and some Nintendo news. We'll see you then.